All right, folks, so today we're back on the Xbox Series S, and this time we're going to be taking a look at setting up the PPSSPP PSP emulator core in RetroArch. Now, in order to do this, your Xbox will need to have developer mode installed, and if you've not already done that, you can check out this video here, which will walk you through the process of getting that all installed and set up. Along with developer mode, you'll also need to have RetroArch installed, and if you need to do that, you can check out this video here that'll walk you through that process too. Once you've got all that set up, there's just a few things we need to do on the computer. So let's head over to the PC and get started. First, we're going to need to add some asset files to our RetroArch installation. So to get those files, we're going to head over to the PPSSPP GitHub page. So here we are on the main PPSSPP GitHub page. And what we're looking to do is download a zip folder of the repository. To do that, click on the drop down on the green code button and select download zip. Once the folder's done downloading, head over to wherever your downloads go and open up the zip file. Double click on the PPSSPP master zip folder to open it. And then double click on the PPSSPP master folder to open that. Within the PPSSPP master folder, scroll down until you see the assets folder. And then just double click to open. Next, we're going to create a new folder on our desktop. So right click on your desktop and select new folder. Name the folder PPSSPP. Next, highlight everything in the PPSSPP folder except for the debugger folder. Then click and drag the files over to the new PPSSPP folder you just created. Once the files are done copying, we're going to add this PPSSPP folder that we just created to a RetroArch installation. In order to do that, open up your Xbox file share and click on the Windows Apps folder. Then select your RetroArch installation. Click on the system folder, and then just drag and drop the PPSSPP folder that you just created straight in there. Next, we're going to add some games. I'm going to be running my PSP games from a flash drive, but if you want to run them from the Xbox's SSD, you can navigate back to the RetroArch folder just by clicking the up button, and then selecting the games folder. Within the games folder, you can create a new folder for your PSP games. Since I'm going to be playing my games from a flash drive, I'm just going to open up the flash drive itself. And you'll see I already have a subfolder created in here named games. So I'm just going to open that folder. Within that folder is where I'm going to create my new folder for my PSP games, just by clicking the new folder button. And I'm going to name this PSP. Next, we're just going to drag and drop the games I have here on my desktop into that folder. Once the games are done copying over to either the SSD or the flash drive, we're all done on the computer so we can head over to the Xbox. All right, so here we are on main developer dashboard screen, and we're going to start off by loading RetroArch by scrolling right, then down and pressing A on RetroArch. OK, so here we are now on the main menu of RetroArch. From here, we're going to create a new playlist for the PSP games that we just added. So in order to do that, we're going to scroll right and down to import content and press A. Next, within the import content menu, scroll right and down to manual scan and press A. Within the manual scan menu, press A on content directory. If you saved your games on the internal SSD, you'll want to scroll down to the S drive and press A. And then within the S drive, scroll down to program files and press A. Scroll down once again to Windows Apps and press A. Then select your RetroArch installation and press A again. Then scroll down to your Games folder and press A. This is where you'll see the PSP folder that you just created. And all you need to do is scroll down and press A to select that. And then scroll down to scan this directory and press A one last time. Since I saved my games on a flash drive, I'm going to go back and navigate to the E drive and press A to open that up. Within the E drive, you'll see the games folder that I mentioned earlier. So just press A to select that. And then we're just going to select the PSP folder by pressing A again. And then all we need to do is scroll down to scan this directory and press A one more time. Next, back on the manual scan menu, scroll down to system name and press A. And then scroll up to select Sony PlayStation Portable. Next, we're going to select the core that we're going to be using. So scroll down to select core and press A. Scroll up until you see Sony PlayStation Portable PPSSPP and press A. Once you've selected the core, scroll down to the bottom of the menu and press A on Start Scan. Once the scan's complete, you'll see a notification in the bottom left-hand corner, and you can hit B to return to the main menu. 
Back on the main RetroArch menu, on the left hand sidebar menu, you'll see a new PSP playlist has been created, so we're just going to scroll right over to that and press A. Next we're going to boot one of the games and take a quick look at a couple of the main settings that you'll probably want to tweak. Press A to select the game and A once again to run and you'll see the game start up. Now this can take a couple of seconds and you'll just see a black screen until it starts. Open up the RetroArch quick menu and you'll see the core menu. Scroll down to options and press A. The first option we're going to take a look at is internal resolution. Press A to open the menu and in here you're able to set the level of upscaling you'd like to use. Now this one's personal preference but I'm going to go with 1920 by 1088 but just select the resolution that you'd like to use and press A. So let's continue moving down the core options menu. I'm going to leave the CPU core and locked CPU core settings as their defaults and the language settings obviously lets you select your PSP system language and again I'm going to leave that as is on automatic. The next option we're going to look at again is personal preference, but in the confirmation button settings you can change the button that you use as the main select button in the game. Since I have a Japanese PlayStation 3 and I'm used to using the circle button for confirmations, I'm going to change this setting to circle, but again this is totally personal preference. Other than these three settings, the remaining settings can be left as default. There are some settings for frame skipping and textures, so feel free to take a look at those, but personally I don't think they really made too much of a difference with the way that the games run. Once you're done with your settings, we're going to do a quick restart. So press the B button until you're back at the main RetroArch menu. Then scroll up to main menu. And then left and down to quit RetroArch. Back on the main developer mode menu, press the A button to restart RetroArch. Once you're back on the main RetroArch menu, you're ready to play your games. Navigate back to your playlist. Scroll right and select the game you want to play. Press the A button to select and A once again to run. And there we go. So that's the quick setup guide for the PPSSPP PSP RetroArch Core on the Xbox Series S and X. I hope you found the video helpful. If you have, please drop us a like and also consider subscribing. It's really helping the channel grow. And also, don't forget to check us out on Twitter. Thanks for watching.